Golf nerds, be aware. You are just about to experience the most in-depth conversation about the brand new Titleist GT line. We're gonna go into all of the tech, all of the science behind it, and we have got Dr. Tom Mace. He is our senior scientist for Cool Clubs and S3 Technologies, and Mark Timms, he's the founder of Cool Clubs. We are gonna take the deepest dive and give you guys out there the best information to go and get fit and purchase the new GT product. So let's start wide view, and I feel yeah. like you you know these products pretty well now. You've done a lot of work on them. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I spent some lab time with them, so yeah, some curses and some ahas. Yeah, right. Well, I guess I'll roll a little bit, and then you know this is going to be a long form conversation. We're going to take our time on this and really find out what what they're about. So let's go nomenclature. So GT is generational technology, and Mark and I have done individual podcasts on these, right. but. They had a big job to improve on what, what they were doing last year. Yeah, they had one of the best drivers on the market with the TSI when it came out, was the best driver that year, all round, right? Um, and TSR was really good and slightly bit better, and this is even slightly bit better. But this is a, a big change for them, right? Yep. This is the first carbon driver that Titleist has ever done. Yep. Um, so this is, this is a bit different one. Well, let's start with that point then. So to be generational technology, they felt like they had to do something different. Titleist has been renowned for like classic shape, classic style, and using classic material. And they've moved away from that crown being titanium, and it's gone to what they're calling a, a, a thermoform seamless crown. And that basically means they've stripped off that top, created their own material specific for Titleist, which is, I want to say it's, it's a polymer of some sort, and, and they've, the resin they've dragged out of it, and they've made it sound like a metal. Yeah, the material itself sounds like metal. Like if you take a you know a carbon piece of you know most of the carbon crown you drop on the table, it'll clunk. I mean they're kind of you've seen what carbon fiber sounds like. It just doesn't have a metal sound to it. This does, and we're basically what it is. It, it's a whole section here that goes over the top. Yep. So if you get rid of that carbon crown, you basically got a face, you know, a bar in the middle, and a piece in the back. Yep. And that's it. So they've got a lot of uh, you know it's given them a lot of room to move around some weight. Okay, and we've had the same story. Right? We touched on it earlier, carbon fly wrap on, on a competitor's product. Right. They've just stripped off the top because they want to use all that weight elsewhere, and we have such big uses for weight nowadays, right? That's right, and you know, if you, if you look at the, the, the plot we're looking at, the MOI sum versus the CG depths, you know, this is where club designers work on this stuff, and they say, hey, how do we get over to this, uh, this side of the curve? The trend is one way, and they say, hey, let's try to make a driver that down, works down in this area. And it looks, looks like this is what they, they've done. They've, they've uh, moved the CG closer to the face, and uh, they've given up a, a little bit of MOI with that, but they still are, are uh, the same MOI that's going to get you good hits. Big conversation to be had here, right? MOI, yeah. 10K. We, we've... We've enjoyed it, we've poked a bit of fun of it, but really it's, it's just this graph in a big conversation, right? It's just like, where do you want to position yourself as a company or as a family of drivers on, the, on this scale? So from left to right, we're looking at um, the lowest sum MOI, which is we've chosen two, two axes of MOI that we fancy are most applicable for golf. Right, right. Added them together and created that sum. And then on, on the other axis, we've, we've got CG depth, and we're talking about depth of CG from the face through to the rear of the golf club. From, from the shaft axis. Yeah, yeah. shaft axis. Yeah. Yeah. Shaft, sorry, Towards shaft the axis to the rear. There, yeah. That's why Tom's here. Yeah. I need that correction <laughs> to the rear. So essentially, there is a, there's a direct correlation between how far back that CG goes and right. then the sum MOI, right? That's right. And all of these factors come into play and they're interrelated. So you can't have a gigantic MOI and have the, the CG up close to the face. It just doesn't work that way. And so and I think Titleist recognize that, and, and they said, hey, let's, let's get, it's like control bars and, that a sound man, you know, will, will move. And it's like, oh, here's the CG, and it's like, oh, but the MOI kind of goes with that. And so there's, there's probably half a dozen key ingredients into making a, a, a golf club driver, and, and Titleist has taken a very interesting approach to this this family. And, and two, that you know how you adjust those things, and there's not a lot of give and take, right? So right. yeah, okay, you move the CG forward, you get more ball speed, lower mm -hmm. spin, 
but it's not forgiving in general. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a bunch of little livers, and they're trying to mess around with it. And, and and really, what they're trying to do is fit a whole bunch of players. So having a widespread of those things probably makes sense, right? Yeah. And and some models you can change the weights, and it changes it quite a bit. And, and some you can't. So they're all trade offs. Right? Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about the technology a little bit more in terms of. So they saved the weight on the crown, but now they've still got options, right? That that just broadens their horizons in where they can go because right. they could have just thrown it all the way back and had a 10k story yeah right yeah probably but well, they chose to to actually do this thing called split mask construction and they've thrown the weight down low and more towards the face right more towards the face and but we've talked about this before is that that you change the moi and there's two domains that you live in one is the golfer swinging that club you know what's going to happen with that but the second domain is the physics of the impact. And so you, you say, oh, well, a, a giant MOI really helps for this little half a millisecond that, that you're on impact with the ball. But, you know, there's, there's like a, a, a second point, too, that really matters that when the golfer swings at. And I think Tylus has looked at that and said, hey, we think it really matters on the swinging of the club and that we don't want to overload uh, uh, players with this high MOI. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, you know, to some extent, if you get a really high MOI, you're fighting the ball going right because it's harder to score the face up, right? I mean, that's, that's what right. happened with drivers a million years ago when they first came out with titanium drivers, they got bigger. Giant drivers. Yeah, you know, they all end up being fade bias, so they may more upright and some other things you can do to mess around with that. But there's give and takes to all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, th th they put the weight down low. They've, they've definitely moved that CG in orders of magnitude closer right right and you've done some awesome graphs i'm gonna do my best here to go through and find some examples and let's go maybe two three four if, if we can here um of the the sum moi and the cg location and we're just comparing this specifically to its predecessor right so we've moved it um quarter of an inch closer to the shaft axis to the face right the cg that is right. and we have lost somewhere in the realms of three four hundred grams per centimeter squared in moi right and I've kind of pinched you on this before yeah. we started. What does that mean in terms of MOI? What's 300, 400 points worth in the scale of golf? You know, that's, that's a, a tough one. And we could probably do simulations, uh, but that doesn't address what the player swinging. And so the, uh, I think the, I haven't done the player swinging testing, but, you know, it's, it's a little bit, and it's probably, you know, uh, perceivable towards tour players because they can perceive uh, you know right. great things uh, but the uh, it's it's not a giant change and maybe that just helps uh, all these other players in to square the face yeah so I I don't know a definite answer on that I can't say oh well it's it's this percentage of fairways that you're going to miss I don't have a shots I, game to some extent it might be player dependent too different yeah. people react differently to things right so we always say you know soft tip shafts or high launching, people launch them higher. Some people don't, because yeah. they right. load it differently. So yeah. there's and always that, exceptions to it. Another point in this design space story, and I don't know if you skipped over it, but it's aerodynamics, right? They've, okay. they've adjusted all of these shapes in aerodynamics, but just adjusting shape, people think, oh, you know, they just curve it here or tuck this weight in there, actually has a big effect on that design space. As they've dragged the back up in this case to be more aerodynamically efficient in, in the golf swing fashion, there's trade-offs, right? You, you're moving CG around just by changing the shape of that, that sole design. Right. Either you're, you may, the aerodynamicist might be saying like, oh, the shape has to be like this. And the mass properties engineer might be saying like, no, I need the mass right down there. And right, that's right. outside of your shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so there's a given. Again, take. another trade-off. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and those guys are fighting it out. And then Luckily, they do the good job and we get products like this. Well, maybe, and yeah. I, I think this is what happens, is the, the aerodynamic change, and maybe that's someone's idea came out of the box, forced the material change on top because once you've moved, dragged the CG up, you're like, oh, if you want your CG where you want it, we're going to have to get the weight somewhere else. And it kind of all lines up to yeah, be something. Yeah, without that carbon face, they'd have a hard time doing that. Right. CG would be in a different place to where it is now without that weight saving. Yes. Right. No, that's, that's true. 
so now let's jump up into the the GT3 to the uh, to the TSR3, and you've done an awesome job here too because the GT3 is the only one where you can move the the weight on the x axis from from left to right, from heel to toe. All the others you right. can adjust a little bit of rear weight. And it's weight covered out. obviously for right. aerodynamic reasons, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, and it's not, you know, in the case of this driver, it doesn't change it a whole lot because it's not moving it very far, far, and it's also closer to the shaft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't see as big a range, although, you know, this is still important because this helps you with just fine tuning whether you draw it or fade it, which is really important for pale layers. So yeah. it's, it's still needed, but it didn't make as big a difference as it does with some other models. Yeah. Right? And Tom touched right. on this with the CG. You know, a little change in CG forward, we don't really know what the net result is on the golf course, but there's definitely player feel. And well, you can feel that in those weights. There, there's player feel, and also, you know, I, I look at their two adjustable models as this is for super fine turn tuning, yeah. probably at high speeds. Yeah. Because it's right. just a little bit of mass movement at a higher speed has a bigger difference. Whereas we'll talk about in a little while, in the four, there's, there's a considerable mass movement of uh, moving the CG. And uh, that's accessible for the slower swing speed uh, players, the, the non-tour. The no, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, and, the, and then the four is almost like it's two different clubs. Exactly. I mean, so much weight. And you change right. the MOI so much um, that the four actually has a slightly higher MOI with it all the way in the back than the three does. So, like I said earlier, and the, the other thing we talked about, I think we're going to sell some more fours. It's not just for tour players. Yeah. If you put that weight back, quite a few other people can hit it. You don't need as much speed when it's back that far because it does help launch a little bit. So, yeah, uh, it's you like know, it's something one or two percent of the market. It, it might be, you know five to ten. I mean, it's not going to be still yeah. half the market, but you it's, know. it's almost like two distinct clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Four A, four B. They talk about it like a two plus or a three plus, and we'll kind of get into that. But this is going to open up that box. And when I asked you, what does, you know, 300 or 400 MOI points mean as a sum? Well, the GT3 has gone from 8,000 to almost 7,000. So they've really thrown the CG forward here mm -hmm. and reduced MOI, and that's what we've seen. That that spin launch, you know, we, and we saw about a bigger spin difference, spin in, this, difference in this model, down. right? Yeah, yeah. So it's considerably lower. We've got evidence there that, that they've gone from eight thousand to in the old GT uh, TSR three, and now right. they're eight thousand in the the GT two. Right. So. The, the old GT two, the new GT two is like the old TSR three in terms of. Uh, that design space. I don't want to say forgiveness because I don't yeah. think it necessarily washes out to that. But in design, well, MOI space. doesn't necessarily wash out to it because if you look at, you know, you know, obviously this is getting a lower MOI than it had before. Yeah. But yet our toe and heel, which is really forgiveness, right off center, where's it all go, um, is better. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've seen now. Worse MOI, but. More forgiving. More forgiving. Okay. How so, does that yeah, work? Yeah. Well, it does. There's lots of stuff. It, yeah. Working, there's right? more going on that. That's all. Um, so we're, we're basically seeing now that Titleist are, are almost giving us an answer. They're saying, well, we think that there's a thousand MOI points means that you start pointing it at a different different player. And it's not just MOI, it's all the other things as well. CG moving forward and the MOI moving. But that's what they've done is they've chosen a thousand MOI points between the, the GT2 and the GT3 and they're aiming them at different players. So right. we know that, that 250 to 300 is... There's a, there's a nudge there. It's not yeah. nothing. There's, there's something to talk about. It, it's, a, it's like a half a half a nudge. Yeah. And, you know, the broad spectrum of players, and, you know, my hat's off to considering, you know, how a player swings and, and what that difference is and, and in, in designing the club because that's just as important as from my, you know, mechanical engineering viewpoint of what exactly is happening in that half a millisecond. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's it's a big deal, I think, and uh, I think it's I like the way that it's going. You know, yeah. the swing dynamics and then the impact dynamics. Yeah, and we're talking about Tyler specifically here, but I just had a thought as you were talking about that on how important fitting is, seeing the the how broad that graph is of design space. I mean, how can you if if you're calling MOI a big storyline, which it undoubtedly is, and Tyler sit down here and Ping sit down here, how does the average golfer have any idea of where to position themselves? Yeah, you kind of got to hit them with that. Point. <laughs> you have yeah, to yeah, hit them. Exactly. Some other technology might be able to see some of these things, but you know, different people react differently to different, you know, CG and CG location. Whether it's you know how far back it is, 
you know, affects how easy it is to close the face up. Yeah. And some people, you know, will probably do the opposite, right? You think it was harder to close and they just feel it and they force it harder. So yeah. um, that's why, you know, we're kind of excited about, you know, we'll touch on another thing with sports box, right? Because we're going to start capturing all these swings yeah. and how the club moves in space and how they deliver it. And that coupled with the launch monitor data, it'll be interesting to see if we find anything and, and certain moves people make that kind of, predict that and that's where AI comes into right you get mm -hmm. a whole bunch of good data you know maybe we'll learn more about that yeah a little and, machine and, learning and on what these what these maybe certain types of do. swings you, you yeah. need a four CG or you can't square the face or you need a you know, lower MOI I mean, you know I mean, don't know yet for me it's a little sigh of relief for some job security you know if Tom <laughs> yeah. had chosen to go to the 10k route would have been like damn they've everyone's figured it out yeah. and you yeah. know yeah. that's what no. we could do but well, they're not yeah, but the, th the thing that's happened is, and, and especially in the last five years, right, we're, we're kind of up against the limit, right? You got the USG limit on land, you got the USG limit on how CC is, how big it is. You got an MOI limit, um, which, you know, some of the drivers, you put a piece of lid tape on the back and theoretically they're no longer legal, so you're really at the limit. Um, they're all good, right? right. Um, which one's right for you, though, and fitting it correctly, that's a big difference. Yeah. I mean, you get the wrong type of club even if it's a great golf club for the, you know, for the wrong person. Yeah. And you give up 10, 15 yards just laying like that. Yeah. Right? Just drop and spin too low or launch too low or whatever. So, yeah. Or throwing your swing off. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. some people just yep. like the way a deep CG feels. And yeah, some, you like deep CG. Right? I like deep CG. Yeah. yeah. And, and so. I'm not sure I do because I think I can't turn it over. Exactly. And, and that's like, but that makes a difference. And yeah. so, so you're talking about, you're talking about what's happening at this impact, but you know, if I have a driver that I'm comfortable with, then I'm going to add yards. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, doesn't, yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. matter about the physics. Yeah, right, right. If, if I deliver it and there's and definitely deliver some it placebo better, effect in there for yeah. sure as well. I, so. It's not. I don't think it's a placebo. I think no, it's no, real. It's real. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, and it may be. If yeah. you think it's real, it yeah. is, right? And I'm going to half open a can of worms, but I'm going to shut it and don't let this go down this okay. route. But I actually think that that conversation there is what's happened on tour with distance a lot. I think the drivers have become so considerably more forgiving and more confidence inspiring to players that they can throw the club at it as hard as they've ever thrown it in any history of the sport right. and get a better result. And that confidence has meant we've seen longer drives, not necessarily that the drivers are hotter off the face because it's been governned for so long that we know that that well, can't they're, be they're, it. They're physically stronger. Right, they're physically and stronger. Because they're stronger and the, their clubs are more forgiving. And, yeah. and particularly with this driver, I, I will say one thing, that from the robot testing we've seen, right around the center, the quarter inch off center, I mean, the spin is incredibly consistent. So yeah. it's coming out the same window. In other words, the tour play a really good shot anywhere in here is going to go exactly in the window they want. Right. So they can do that. They can swing as hard as they want and they're not going to miss it that far off center. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're swinging harder because of that. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Yeah. And we've seen so many guys adopt this on tour. You know, how, these, how hard do these tour players work uh, to dial in their products, you know, again, push towards fitting. If tour pros are doing it, you should get fit for your product because yeah. they're already really good anyway. Yeah. Um, and, and we've seen these people put this in the bag like kind of week one they're giving it. So you know that this technology is delivering a result and they're not hanging back. When you see people like not, not adopting new products straight away, you know that there's maybe some work to do in fitting it for them. Right. But they just threw this in the bag. And so Titleist players are, you know, fiddly, let's say. Like they want it to look traditional. They want it to feel a certain way. Right. They, you know, under all those constraints, it's hard to be innovative, if, I think, in, in terms mm. of design. And this is incredible work they've done through this to have technology and... Uh, still fit there. Well, it's nice that this is, this is a pretty big range, right? They've right. kind of, you know, the four is now way lower spin than the old one. Yeah. And we haven't seen the one yet, but the, the two is, you know, a little higher launching and stuff too. So you got, you've got spread out how many people have fit. Mm -hmm. um, but with all those fine tuning things they've got, you know, particularly in the, the four, you know, forward and back, you know, you could fit in things. And if you really look at the USA guidelines, there is no more distance out there, right? I mean, we've got the max COR. Yeah. You know? Um, from the center, at least. From the center, at least. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> but you are getting things more forgiving and, and bigger centers, basically, and with consistent windows. Yeah. Um, and, and then your swings change over time. So our job's not going away. No. I, I certainly can't hit the same driver did 10 years ago. And yeah. So. Yeah. Well, let's look at the four while you talked about it, because this is the design right. space. It's basically uh, the luxury of, of having Tom on board here is that you spend someone, someone who spends a lot of time measuring not just you know, the MOI and the sum, but in both of those weight positions. And we can see where the TSR sits versus the GT4. So 
in the standard forward weight position, which is where most people would probably start their fit in or buy it off the right. rack, you know, MOI almost stayed the same in some, but we saw that CG come towards the shaft axis, come near the face, indicate in lower spin, lower launch, right? Less, right. Potentially less forgiveness, but we didn't see that in the net results of the robot. No. But then when you throw the weight back, we go over the seven and a half thousand, which I think if we go back to the- A couple of years ago, that would have been you know, a pretty high forgiving driver. Right. I mean, that would right. have been like the maxes of some companies. It exceeds GT3 in all weight positions in terms right. of some MOI. Right. So they, we talked a little, a little earlier, they used to call it a three plus, but now it's, it's almost like a two plus. You know, it goes from a four to a two plus. So they've really covered the absolute spectrum with this, this lineup of drivers, this family of drivers with design space and capabilities of fitting it to every player, right? Exactly right. And that's what, if, if you look at the, the first plot we threw, wow. threw up there, you can see that they're, they're spread out along the, that axis. Yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, look at that. So this is this is a design space, the MOI design space, the crown sole on the vertical axis and the heel toe on the the horizontal axis, and yeah, you can you can see that they're in that the lower third. That's where they like to be, yeah. and that's where they believe they can give players clubs for the 1.2 second yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, time frame that they can make a better difference and, and uh, that's that's where they're headed, I think. Yeah, well, the, and just for reference, the purple, because we didn't name this because there's lots of brands involved. This is pretty much all the major OEMs here right. pl plotted. The purple on this chart is the TS, uh, TSR line and the pink is the GT line. So you can see that there are some slight changes, but they really haven't gone away from their core belief too much, right? They're still at the no. same end of the graph. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and like Mark said, <laughs> We're going to be in this industry a while because look at the the space that's being controlled well, there. I mean, I mean, all those products are really good products. Right. It's not like you can point. Oh well, this point on the graph is bad. That's not true. No, it's no. Ju it's I mean, just like that super high. It's just really good too. Exactly. Yeah. A player just needs to find where they like to be on on a plot like this. Yeah, and, and not to confuse people, but yeah, you, you almost need to know you know where do you like the CG in your club. Because right. mm -hmm. if you like a deep CG and that feels good to you, which uh, like for you, Dom, yeah, okay. Yeah, um, I'm not sure, but I, I'm thinking I'd like it further forward. Actually, and I, I, I'm in the same case as you. I've tried all the drivers this year, as I should. My position, you know, we get the opportunity to do it. I, I really did hit the 10K, the higher MOI drove as well. They feel good off the face. There's no no downside. But these forward CGs, GT3 is one of them that I tried. I hit, I hit them further. And it's not because of ball speed, because Lord knows that they all come off the face quick, otherwise the, right. the manufacturer wouldn't be in the industry anymore. There's something else going on. So whether it's the shape, whether it's the aero, whether it's the CG, I, I can't tell you, but that's why S3 technology exists, that's why Tom Mace is on board with us, that's why Cool Clubs has all of this technology in its fitting software. We're not doing this for a laugh, and we're not doing this no. just, to, just no. to sit here and have a chat. We're doing this to give you, the golfer, the best results, the best experience during a fitting. So all of this data that Tom spent hours on and right. Mark spent hours on and we've mm -hmm. talked about, hopefully we're giving you the confidence that you can walk into a worldwide golf shop, you can walk into cool clubs and know that your fitter is backed with this information. And, and that's what we're doing for it originally. Exactly. So we started doing this years ago and doing this testing and stuff. You know, give the fitter more information so mm -hmm. he knows, yeah. you know, which one does what and can play around, right? Because otherwise it's blind draw. And, and the biggest problem you have in fittings is people get worn out. Right. Yeah. You know, I won't say, like, I have a 40,000, you know, demo. Great. Who's going to hit 40,000 demos? You got a year, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, yep. What you need is to narrow it down really quick and, right. and then know the differences them and say, well, if there's one of these two don't work, well, let's go here and try what happened. Let's go right. here. And if this works, okay, let's work on this side of the fence and not. So it's, it's really to help our fitters narrow things yeah. down and right. as much as anything. They've had this experience. You know, a lot of our fitters have been doing this for 14, 15 yeah. years plus, right? right? So there's already an advantage there. But when you, when you give them the tools, and, and this is, I think, the only way you guarantee what you do in the industry and you have the return weights that we do, which are Nothing. near on zero, yeah. right? is the fact that you, you back it up with evidence. And, and mm -hmm. this is why science exists, right? Yeah. Is that we can all have an idea and a concept, as Tyler's do, as every other OEM does, but it's like 
nailing it down to these fine points that we can say, right, that is the evidence behind where we're going with this. Yeah, and, and as we gather more data over time with, you know, sports blocks that we start integrating now yeah. with Foresight and TrackMan and we get looking at all this data, you know, our, our hope is over time, which is what AI is really good at if you get a good data to look at, right. is to be able to point out things in people's swings so we kind of know where to, you know, what direction to put them in. Yeah, right. And, they're they're going to be yeah, on this end of the right spectrum. 100% of the or, time, but right. we can be like, you know, it's 90%, you, know, you love these coefficients. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, what's the, what's, what's 95, the range? 95, 95. 95. 95. Yeah. 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 I like that. That confidence yeah. rating is a good yeah. confidence yeah. rating. But we'll probably find some stuff like that, you yeah. know, guys yeah. that do this at the top. Okay, well, maybe they don't need that. We don't know yet. Right. Yeah. There's a whole bunch we don't know, we'll find out. And I'm sure we've probably lost a lot of you by now, yes. but the, the real people that are into it, the golf nerds, which we warned you about before you right. started the video, you're still here, yes. you're still watching, and hopefully it's inspired you to you know, come and use a worldwide golf store, come and use a cool club store, and, and get this information firsthand. So. But my guess is if you're looking at trying to title us, you probably should be at least hitting two of them. Yes, yeah. Right? Well, it, maybe even three now, because if this one goes from here to here, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I'm going to put an 18 handicap in these two. I'm probably... Over you're right, you're, right, you're yeah. right. I don't know about the one yet. Right? Yeah, That's exactly right. There's, There's another one. The visual one on the, the table, I'm really interested to see what they do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys sat through that and enjoyed that. Tom, amazing work. I can't yeah. wait to see what you do with all the other products that are coming out. It's Thank just, you. It's, yeah. it's great working with you guys. So. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, Stay tuned. So much more product to come this year.